what you see here. I got this ET tape, which is way too low. And what's starting to happen? Adolescence starting to develop adolescence. So you can see here that the placement of the ET tube is right now. We got this because he's, he was desetting. What else do we want to look at? Right. And see how it goes down and then up. Follow it, goes down to the iliac. Okay, this is the insertion side right here. Now, where is it? L1. Okay, start from the last bit of L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. It's really pretty low, isn't it? Okay, so it's it's almost down. What happens if that line comes out of the artery? That's right. Can you tell how big this baby is? He likes to. He's a little bitty baby. He's 675 grams. Now, how much blood would he have to lose before he got into trouble? Like just a <laughs> That's right. He has so give him 90 per kg. He doesn't have. He has 50 cc's in his entire body. 50 cc's of blood. Now, how much blood does he have to lose to get into trouble? That's right. Five cc's, and he's that's ten percent of his blood volume. Ten cc's, then that's twenty percent of his blood volume. How many of us could stand to lose twenty percent of our blood volume and not be symptomatic, and we're not sick? None of us. So when the line starts getting that low, you have to be very, very careful. And it's almost not worth leaving the line in. You would want to replace this line and put it in good position to protect the baby. Okay. Pneumothorax. Mm -hmm. How do you know this is pneumothorax? It's the air over there. Right. And, and you see how dark it is? How completely dark it is? You see how the heart is shaded over? And you can see the air permeating over here. The heart shifted to the opposite side. This baby already had a chest tube in it. But this chest tube, for whatever reason, went across the knee is done. But look at this. This is a red rubber catheter. How many holes do you see in this red rubber catheter? Right. How many holes do you think comes in a red rubber catheter? Just one. That's right. So there are some extra holes cut in here. This baby had recurrent pneumothoraces. The thought was, that, well, if we can put some extra holes in here, then we won't have to keep replacing this chest tube. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> he continued to have pneumothoraces, and this one was so huge, he also had a pneumoperitoneum. Mm -hmm. Look at this. See, it goes down into the peritoneum, and you can see the outline. And look right here, air underneath the diaphragm. Make the incision. Use a hemostat to pop through the full space. Nine times out of ten, as you pop through the full space, the pneumothorax is bleeding. And you put the chest tube in to continue to aspirate air out of the full space if, for whatever reason, the pneumothorax continues to be accumulated. Okay. Okay. Now, would you call this a pneumothorax? No, it's a pneumomediastinum. We're going to talk about why you would it's a pneumomediastinum, not a pneumothorax. Stay lung markings throughout this day. Okay, it's obviously free air, but there are lung markings throughout. It's not consolidated, it's not solid, black, free air. Okay, and see all these different, see all you can see all the lung markings. It's hard to see the heart because this is a Pneumomediastinum. And the lateral shows pneumomediastinum air gathering over the top of the sternal area. But it doesn't look like much air down in this area. In the thorax, air is going to uh, collect not only just here, but up on top of the diaphragm. So, okay? You do not treat a pneumomediastinum in your chest. Again, this is a pneumomediastinum again. 
here's a thymus, and the thymus can be elevated and make it look like um, atelectasis. But the thymus, again, is a gland that just lies flat over the top of the heart. And in the newborn, it's big. When you have air that has gathered that around the mediastinum, it can physically push the thymus up. Some people call it a sail something. A sail. It looks like a, like a sail sail sail. on the boat. There are, there's some controversy. Many people consider a cell sign a normal finding on a chest x ray. Other people will say you have a cell sign with a normal medius finding. The best thing is to say it looks like the thymus is elevated because of this normal medius finding. Okay. Number thorax on the left side. Okay. Now, what is this? Is that the lung where it's that's, the, that's the lung. And you can see the lung because this lung has high membrane disease and it is very stiff, a stiff lung. So it, that's why it's, even though there's a lot of air here, you can still see the outline. Okay. Did the chest TV in, evacuated the air? Look at where the heart goes back. So <clears throat> See, look how the heart is not even visible almost. You shift it over to the other side. Okay. Now, this is cross table lateral. Initially, when you put the chest tube in, you should always check your cross table lateral along with the flat plate. Now, where do we want our chest tube to go? For example, if this baby's laying flat on his back, this is a cross table lateral. So he's lying flat on his back, and the x ray beam is shooting this way. Air rises to the top. Air rises to the top, correct. So the air should be right up there. So we should want our chest tube to go anterior or on top of the lung. Yeah. How many times does that chest tube go on top of the lung? It's, it's a very difficult thing to make the chest tube go on top of the lung because once you enter the portal space, the free air is evacuated before you can get the chest tube in. Therefore, you're trying to put a chest tube in this little tiny space where the lung has already re-expanded. And you're trying not to damage the parenchyma, so you don't want to force it. And of course, it's going to go to the area of least resistance. If the lung is re-expanded, then it's easier for the chest tube to go down than it is for the chest tube to go up on the top of them. So it's a difficult thing a lot of times to get it to go anterior. And with the right foot, when you get down, shift to the left. The heart looks like it's completely on the left side, doesn't it? Where's our ET tube? Mm -hmm. That's right. This baby just about oh, has NPC pep, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With a tube, <laughs> directly to his MP. Um, so that ET tube is barely in. All right, how about the UVC? This is probably this good place, and it'll be okay. It's a little bit on the high side, but it, it would be okay. Okay, now look at this. So right in the thorax, you have a mediastinal shift. Now what else do you see in here? This baby has a pigtail because he came, he had to come over for surgery. And so this pigtail is a surgical, uh, surgery put it in on that side when he was over here. He continued to have air leaks. And so the ones on this side are the ones that we put in. There's no one for the chest tubes in the Wrong. This chest tube is not in the full space. It's outside the full space. Okay. This chest tube is in this one, but it's obviously occluded or something because it had a uh, recurrent pneumothorax. So we had to put another chest tube in this way. But so it's very important to always look at everything. We got you know, if you get this chest X-ray to determine if he's got a pneumothorax. Maybe he has a pneumothorax because that. Top chest tubes with out of full space. 